All right. Match uh, three uh, in the um, end game one. Uh, I am uh, going to mulligan this. Obviously, there's too high of a chance that this does nothing. Um, yeah, it's just too clunky. If I um, even if I do drop Chalice, um, yeah, it's just too high of a chance that this doesn't do anything. I can afford to. to yeah, and this hand, um, this hand does have a much uh, better chance of actually playing out well. I think I think here specifically repeal is not at its best. We don't have Aether Vial, and we don't have a. Uh, we don't know what our matchup is. Okay, you know, ad nauseum. I, I think this is a good matchup, and hopefully I can uh, demonstrate that by winning this game. Uh, you know, I, I've heard that um, Eldrazi. I mean, I've heard that uh, ad nauseum players believe this is a good matchup, but you know, especially if we're playing Force Negation main, I think I think that really gives us the potential to, I mean, counter their their win condition for free unless they wait for our turn. But you know that. Usually, they most of their spells that aren't ad nauseum are uh, sorcery speed, you know. So, um, yeah. Now, unfortunately, here since I didn't know they run on nauseum, I uh, did not, you know, mull to like a um, to like a uh, for example, chalice. Um, but uh, you know, um, yeah, they might get us this game, but we shall see. Uh, definitely, definitely. I think games two and three were pretty solidly favored. We've got Chalice, we've got Deprive, we've got Force Negation. Uh, we've got a lot of hate in this matchup. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, they might they might have it, but they definitely don't. They definitely don't have it quite yet. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I like this matchup. You know, it's not like it's not it's not like a stupendous, absolutely we're guaranteed to win matchup. But I think I've definitely won this matchup more than I've lost uh, by a decent by a decent amount too. I think this member, of course, is basically completely dead. So I think that's a pretty easy pitch. You know, and now if we don't die next turn, at least at least we can uh, continue to dig with Smuggler's Copter while while uh, having access to our mana. Um, and then I think we want to play Chalice on one if we can, because that will shut off Angel's Grace, which would be their combo ticket if they're not playing um, Phyrexian on Life. Of course, it would have been nice to shut off these Serum Visions too, but hey, what can you do? I don't think uh, spreading seas really does much of anything. Um, yeah, you know, like I, I'm just gonna try to try to win with uh, with damage at this point. I mean, I'm drawing a land would have been nice because an untapped land, because then I could have uh, really uh, increased the chances of. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, in my experience playing the prowess decks, they're almost certainly going to win next turn because, you know, believe me, um, without any counter magic or chalice of any kind, uh, we've just played like a really, really slow version of like some type of prowess deck right here. They they almost always beat me when I'm when I'm on prowess and I'm and I and I don't have the ability to win quicker than this. So, so I'm predicting that they are, they either have a Frexion on life into a ad nauseum, or they have the uh, Angel's Grace into ad nauseum. By now, in theory, they could have the three card combo. Well, you know that. Um, so they got their Angel's Grace. That's I think I guess they were searching for. Um, so or spoils of the vault. I mean, oh yeah. So now they can do the Angel's of the Grace. I, I mean, they can do spoils of the vault, vault Angel's Grace, the Oracle. Yeah, which is nice, but as you can see, Chalice shutting off Angel's Grace would have uh, would have ended all of this. Plus, I was only one turn away from winning. I mean, it, it's actually surprising that we did this well, considering that we didn't know what they were on, and uh, and um, 
yeah, we we had literally no interaction. Of course, it does always seem like they always win right before you know the turn right before you would, but um, yeah, I mean, I'd like to think that that people know that uh, winning game one with a combo deck doesn't really mean much. I mean, I think if your combo deck is routinely losing on game one, I think that's a that's a very um that's a very bad sign personally. So, you know, I'm pretty sure I I feel pretty good that we can win games two and three. And believe it or not, one of the main reasons is just simply we know what we're facing now. So we're not going to keep a good grinding hand that doesn't have any interaction. Repeal is actually good, believe it or not, because this um this can bounce um. Phyrexian on life in response to ad nauseum. Spreading seas just doesn't do enough. Sure, like in some very, very rare games, it can cut them off of double black, but it just, uh, most of the time, it doesn't do enough. And the rest of this is just uh, is just pure gold. Chalice, repeal, smuggler's copter, the creatures are, deal good damage, deprive. Yeah, I mean, everything else everything else works like a well-oiled machine in games 2 and 3. You know, no interaction, and it sucks because this otherwise actually would be pretty good. I mean, obviously the Fairy Conclave slow it down, but in my experience, those those hands usually get there. Well, got some interaction, got, got Vile. I think I have to keep, but this is a little frustrating because this is the type of hand that uh, I might end up losing with. But at the same time, I don't think it's correct to mulligan to more interaction, because I, I do have some interaction here, and I have the means to play my stuff. Of course, uh, this is this is the type of hand I easily could have had in game one, but, you know. Yeah, so Lotus Bloom uh, could, be, could be a good option to... Um, hit with Chalice. One interesting thing we can do with Repeal is we can uh, play Chalice on zero, and then we can counter the Lotus Bloom, and then after it counters it, we can bounce it for one back to our hand, and um, and uh, then play it for one. But of course, we don't have Repeal here. So, you know, um, although it's tempting to try to snag Lotus Bloom, Bloom with a Chalice on zero, I still think in general it's correct to play Chalice on one. You know, they have cantrips, and... Um, you know, this actually shuts off half of their combo. Lotus Bloom just, um, just you know, accelerates them. But, you know, Chalice on one actually shuts off half their combo. In my experience, this is correct. So, let's see. Plus, also, this makes it so that Repeal on four, I mean, you know, Repeal for uh, four mana uh, is, like a, is like a counterspell of sorts, too, since they can't... Um, since they have to rely on that. Um, I mean, deprive, but like, I'm not too worried this turn, so I'm just gonna play the uh, play the Silver Gill Adept. That's that's fantastic. I do need to draw another land though, just because I am a bit soft to them comboing on my turn. Believe it or not, that is something they can do. Uh, although I suppose I could counter the Frexian on life if they have it, but yeah, they don't have Frexian on life. That's a good sign because um, that generally means that they rely on Angel's Grace, which is being shut off by Chalice. I wouldn't be surprised if Chalice is shutting off a number of their cantrips. Oh, and there I've got the, uh, so let's think about this. If I play out a creature, does that, does that change my clock? Because let's see, here I can attack them for five, play a creature at end of turn, and then if I play the other lord, um, so there, they'd be at 15, and then I'd have, I'd have three creatures that can attack, which are 4-4, four, 4-4, four, 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 five, four. that's 13, it's not quite enough, but actually if I play, if I tap the Aether Vial and I play this now, that's seven, um, maybe not 13, and then next turn, I'd have a 4-4, four, four, a 4-4, four, four, and a 5-3 attacking, which is exactly 13. So I think the play here 
since I don't want to have to um to have to cat to have to play force negation for its alternative cost is I'm going to violin right now instead of waiting till end of turn. Usually it's correct to wait until end of turn, but here where it speeds up my clock by a full turn, it's got to be correct. It's a little scary that they have access to so much mana, but uh, but honestly I feel better that they um that they don't have access to Angel's Grace and uh, and Phyrexian on Life will cost them three mana if they want to go that route. Uh, well, I think I go for this. I mean, they might have like um, Force of, I mean, uh, so, um, Pact of Negation, but like I, the fact that I can just win if this gets countered, yep. Well, you know, I mean, they well, they, they, they can't use Angel's Grace, so I, th I think this is GG. You know, I do. I think this is, in fact, GG. i got to remember to file in my Lord. Yep, and that's exactly lethal. Yeah, and most of that was basically with the same, with what we had access to in game one. Just didn't have Chalice then because I didn't know what I was up against. Um, I'm not going to run it back. Of course, they had Bantu's Last Reckoning. I'm pretty sure that's not in their main deck, of course, but we had the Force of Negation, which also wasn't in our main deck, so it all kind of canceled out. Well, I mean, I've got my free counter magic. I've got, I've got a clock. I've got the means to play it. I've got two pieces of disruption. One is obviously much better than the other, but Repeal is a piece of disruption because it can balance Phyrexian on life. So, you know, you know they 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 can possibly overcome this, but uh, but this definitely puts them to the test. You know, this is not this isn't something that um that comes easy to them unless they get lucky. You know, and of course us get unlucky in the sense that you know we, we don't have that much. Uh, that much disruption here. Yeah, see how brutal Chalice on one can be, surprisingly? See, the deck doesn't need the one drops to go off sometimes, but it does need them sometimes for the Angel's Grace part, and sometimes the cantrips, uh, and sometimes, um, yeah. What's also cool is if they don't is if they are not able to use Lotus Bloom the turn it comes out, I can bounce it for one mana at the end of their turn, which is kind of sweet. Unfortunately, if they've got if they've got um, Pact of Negation, this could be a problem. But you know, I could draw another Force of Negation. I could draw a Chalice on zero. It'd be pretty sweet. I think I would play it for zero here because it would also shut off Pact of Negation. The so question is, is uh, you know, I think I think the play here is Silver Gala Dub because I can always play the Merfolk Trickster at end of turn, anyway. But this makes it so that if I draw like, hmm, yeah, not exactly what I wanted, but uh, yeah, this this is great. I can hold up Merfolk Trickster and, um, you know, and I can uh, repeal their Lotus Bloom, probably at the end of the turn. I think I, I think I need to do that, actually, because otherwise I'm very susceptible to losing on my upkeep, which I could be, actually, if they play one more land, anyway. Uh, that's fine. The thing is, is that multiple copies of these are dead, but multiple copies of, of Phyrexian, um, but multiple copies of, uh, of Ad Nauseam are not dead. So, um, yeah, I am going to try to bounce this. They could sack it in response, but I'm, I'm fine with that too. <clears throat> but this is the, <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense because it's, it's almost like gone anyway. Ah, and, uh, well, they could have packed negation, but, you know, that would suck. But gotta, gotta play to my outs, you know? Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, I had to do that then, or I would have lost on my upkeep. 
Hopefully I don't have another one, because I think the jig's up. I, uh, I mean, I could bluff, like, with a deprive or something. I think I lose more games in the long run that way. I'm just gonna... Just gonna rush them, as they say. See, if they got another Phyrexian on life, no biggie. Um, that's why I didn't, uh, didn't count on a Phyrexian on life, you know? Of course, if they got two Ad Nauseams, you know, I couldn't have known, but... But two Ad Nauseams are almost always live, because they could have another Angel's Grace. Um, you know, like, there's, there's, yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is Ad Nauseam is the, um, the scarcer resource for them. And if I draw one more mana, yeah, this is good. I'm in a good spot here. I'm in a good spot because um, if they Ad Nauseam then I can bounce Phyrexian uh, on life in response, since I'm at 4 mana. <sighs> if they play Bantu's Last Reckoning, I might save the uh, Silvergill Adept, though, just um, so I, I don't... just so I have enough gas left over. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that. It's, it kind of sucks, but like, you know, I think, uh, but plus their, their mana is kind of tied up. <sighs> well, that's good. I've got the Deprive. You know, I do, I do need to be able to actually win. I mean, it, 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 it feels bad, but like, realistically, I'm going to sit around doing nothing, and they're going to be able to rebuild if I don't, uh, if I don't have some creatures. <sighs> gotta, you know, gotta feel good about this, you know? Um, gotta feel good about this too. So, you know, to play it on one or to play it on zero. To play it on zero means means I don't have to worry about force and negation anymore. I mean, pact and negation. But to play it on one means that cantrips and angel's grace are turned off. It's actually kind of close. I actually think more of their deck... Mm, this would just really, really suck if I played this on one, and they uh, happen to have uh, Pact of Negation in their hand, and another, and a uh, another Ad Nauseam. Could be wrong, but I'm going to play it on zero. I gotta leave the, uh, the mana up. And, uh, see, this is one reason I, I put them on, I put it on zero, is that I want to be able to, uh, attack more aggressively and not have to worry about ad nauseum into, um, into Pactum Negation, you know? I do have to, uh, put a clock on. I can't, I don't think I can just keep clocking for, for two indefinitely. You know, obviously, I feel pretty good about this. That that makes me wish I would have. Um, I'm, I'm gonna let that go. I don't think they really play anything that could punish this, and most likely, whatever they fetch for is gonna cost more mana. All right, a nauseum. Well, I, I think I got this under control. I'm not sure what they could play. They, you know, they I guess they could play um. Veil Veil of Summer. That would that would really suck because I did have the answer to it, but I'm I'm used to them playing. To them playing Pact and Negation. Well, as we saw there, you know, that would have turned off the spoils. Alright, well, you know, hey. Alrighty, um, I think, yeah, this is, uh, this, this puts them to the test. Got to win next turn, or they're facing six poison. Six poison counters. From a Vile and Merfolk Trickster. Uh, in retrospect, given how they played out, it would have been better probably to put it on one. Although you never know, maybe they do have Pact of Negation. One of the things about Chalice is that sometimes you don't know if it's, if it's working as intended or not. We wouldn't have known if we would have put it on one. 
Um, maybe they would have drawn another ad, another ad nauseum and had the pact of negation, and it would have looked like a mistake, and it would have been a mistake, but we wouldn't have seen how it would have countered spoils of the vault. One, two, three, four. You know, let's see, one, two, three, four. They can make one, two, three, four mana. <sighs> Jeez. Um, you know, if they've got exactly Simeon Spirit Guide and Ad Nauseum, hats off to you. But I'm going to try to play to just, uh, to just take the win here. Well, uh, thank you for showing this, uh, Spike U. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you uh, are going to watch these videos, but, um, well, <laughs> good to know that I did, in fact, make the right choice. Wow, we would have been crushed if I didn't put Chalice on zero. It it's funny, too, because that wasn't necessarily completely obvious, but, um, you know, th the reason why I put it on zero instead of one right there, ultimately, was I had the Force of Negation back up, and all I really needed to do was, was get there ad nauseum. You know, and, and the biggest problem there is that Pact of Negation is such a beating because for zero mana, you know, it, it's 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 like an additional counterspell, obviously. Um, otherwise, otherwise, um, Ad Nauseum is uh, so much mana, you know, it's it, they can't really realistically usually fire off two Ad Nauseums in a row, and it's unlikely to draw that too. So, you know, I, I fired up Chalice on, on zero because, because um, <clears throat> Force of Negation is just so good at their main plan. You know, I just, uh, I just felt like, uh, yeah, and, and plus, you know, it, it didn't really matter as much cutting off, um, cutting, uh, off Angel's Grace when they already had Phyrexian on life and play. Well, you know, thanks for showing the Pact of Negations. That makes me feel better about that decision, and I feel good about that result. Um, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out, but, you know, not to disrespect any Ad Nauseum players. I, I think Ad Nauseum is a very cool deck. It can be very frustrating, though, because it, we don't, we, we on the other side don't have a lot of things to do, and unless... Unless we're playing counter magic, when in which case it does get kind of interesting. Um, but you know, I, I I just I like I like thinking that the ad nauseum matchup is a good matchup for Merfolk because I like the idea that Merfolk has it covered, even though it's a pretty terrible matchup for Prowess, and there's just not a lot I can do about it uh, besides playing very narrow cards like you know Angels Grace myself and a White Splash, which can be done, but it's you know um, not an ideal situation to be in. Well, anyway, let's see how game four goes.